Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, I just want to preface this quickly by saying, boy am I glad that you guys said that you liked this style of video last week. I know that a lot of my channel is kind of journal based, but I was a bit worried, I guess, that maybe you weren't going to be into the journal with me in a traditional sense in the same way. Um, it's a big help because um, it's getting hot here in the UK. I don't feel like I need to talk about why that's problematic for British people. I think at this point most people know and understand, um, but it sucks. It's completely inescapable. There's no aircon. Like we are in the horrors. Like it's a hard time for most people. Um, my bedroom is in the attic, as we all know. That's why I make the attic archives. Um, and at the moment, for the last three or four days, my room has been a cool thirty-three degrees Celsius all day, every day, and at night. Um, which is almost uninhabitable for myself and the dog. Um, it's not ideal at all for working in any capacity. Like, I tried to film this video earlier in the week and I was writing and my hands were so sweaty, I literally smudged all the text off the page. Um, so that's, you have to imagine that that's the vibes I'm fighting against in these videos <laughs> at the moment. Um, but that being said, um, this is another journal with me. I did manage to pull through on one. Um, so if you want to listen to me talking for approximately 30 minutes, you can do that. If you don't want to do that, which is also understandable, um, you can mute the video and listen to music while you watch it. Um, I think these are so fun. I watch these. I don't watch anyone specific, but I do watch random journal with me videos. I think they're really fun for body doubling or when you just want some really chill background noise for a while. Um, I don't really enjoy the videos when they're only 10 minutes long because I feel like it's not enough time to get into anything, which is also a sentiment that you guys expressed under last week's video. So that's interesting. I do think that's interesting. I do think it's impossible to settle into a journaling, like, segment of your own, <laughs> um, to like proper settle down and get on with it when you have to keep changing video every five minutes. I do think that's really annoying. So I watch primarily long videos. If a video is under 30 minutes, I probably won't watch it. But when I make my own videos, I do worry that you guys will just get fed up with listening to me. Um, which, you know, I feel like is still a potential. <laughs> um, but I'm glad that you enjoyed last week's video, especially because this week has been so warm. Last week, I was just struggling with health stuff. Um, and this week, I'm struggling with health stuff and it's unbearably hot. Um, I'm not sure what happened. I feel like this time last year, I was not struggling with the heat so quickly. Um, I feel like I got to July or something before I was actually struggling. I feel like I had a really productive June last year where I was making a lot of videos. But this year, we seem to have jumped from like 19 degrees Celsius to like 29 degrees Celsius in the space of only two or three days. And then it's just been consistent. And the temperature's not dropping enough overnight, nor is there enough of a breeze to air the house out. So I feel like the conditions have just gotten so unmanageable so quickly and I'm not sure how it happened. Um, like, I, for a lot of the beginning of this week, I kept coming upstairs in the afternoon like normal and trying to like persevere with some work and stuff. But like my, my hands are getting too hot holding pens, I'm smudging stuff, my iPad is getting so hot when I'm working on it just because it's plugged in or because I'm using it a lot so it's like heating up in the battery. And then like everything just becomes so sticky so fast. It's so gross. <laughs> like I, it's icky, man. It's so icky. I really can't cope. Um, it's, it's so, it's just sticky. Like I, I don't know what else to say about it. It's so like, I hate it. I really can't do it. <laughs> so I've been hanging out downstairs, which has been working okay because it's so much cooler in the basement. Um, we live in... I guess it's a townhouse, but it's not like a cool townhouse in London or anything, like it's not that style. We live obviously in Reading, so the house is just very small, but it's stacked. It's such a strange, it's a terraced house, I guess that's what it is. So we have neighbours on either side, we share all our walls. And like we have two rooms on each floor, but they're really small rooms, if that makes sense. So we have like four floors, but they're tiny and it's really weird and we don't have any doors. We have like three doors in the whole house. Um, and it's just the heat gets trapped and you can't get enough airflow and it's just weird and hot, um, especially in the attic because we're sharing all our walls and all the heat rises and it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> um, I keep my window open almost all of the time, but obviously to record audio segments, I can't do that. Um, I also do close it during the hottest part of the day. I really, I said <laughs> I keep my window open all the time. I don't. I open it when it's cooler. 
and I keep it closed when it's hot. Um, I did this week also get some blackout curtains, but I think somehow it's making things worse because my room has climbed from like 28 degrees to 33 degrees in that span of time. Um, so I'm not sure how that happened, but I think it's making things worse. I thought it would improve things and um, I think it might be doing the opposite. So, you know, things are happening, it's hot, okay? That's all I'll say about it, <laughs> um, which was already probably too much. People don't like to hear about it, it's annoying, I get it, but it's just weird. So I guess all of that to say the videos might be weird for the next couple of months. I feel like it's gonna be a weird couple of months. It's gonna be kind of like a long, weird summer. I can't believe things are already so hard and it's only June 17th because I just don't feel like it happened this fast last year. I feel like last year I only really struggled this bad for like three or four weeks and um, it's only June and now I'm already, I don't know, like we're not even in August yet, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like August is meant to be the horrible time and it's only June. It already feels impossible. Like I'm already like, how am I actually going to survive this year? Like I'm not sure what's different, um, but something is different somewhere. Okay, <laughs> all of that aside, I'm glad you like these videos because I have a feeling you're going to see a lot more of them. In this week's video, I am making a commonplace page. It's not a commonplace page, it's more of a journaling page, um, but I'm using the commonplace layout that I sell in my shop. Um, originally, I think I was doing these journaling pages more in like the brain drain style with the task column on the side, um, but recently I've been leaning more towards just using the general commonplace layout with the big margin. I like it. <laughs> um, I guess it's the page that's kind of inspired by a daily page in the Hobonichi Cousin, but with like a lot less going on. Um, and I filmed these segments on Thursday afternoon after my doctor's appointment. So I'm writing about my doctor's appointment um, and I the theme for the page is kind of like sleep based. It's all very sort of like moons and sleepy stuff um, and it's quite dark uh, colour wise, <laughs> um, not thoughts wise so much, a little bit maybe, but not that bad. Um, basically the issue that I have been going to the doctor about, like to do with my fatigue and stuff, my, my new theory that someone tipped me off on in a major way, um, is, is a sleep based thing. Um, I don't want to talk about it yet. I'll talk about it when I have answers, when I've progressed through <laughs> the medical bureaucracy and made progress. Um, but basically the new theory is that it's, it's a sleep based thing um in some way so that's kind of why the theming is what it is for the page and it takes me a hell of a long time to work this one out like i'm glad you guys said that you found it relieving how long it takes me to work out because it's very like normal and some people seem to be able to put them together so quickly i can't do it i can't put my pages together quickly it takes me such a long time um this one for sure was spinning me out because i wanted to use that like moon pendant it's an edwardian moon pendant i think and I wanted to use that on the page because it's really pretty. Um, but I couldn't work out where to place it. And the fact that the image has like shadow at the bottom, I think was kind of putting me off because I, when I was putting it down on the page, I thought it looked weird. When I watched the video back, I don't think it looks as bad. But when I was looking at it in person, it was really freaking me out in a way. In the end, I did use it and I was really happy with how it all turned out, but that was really spinning me out. And if you can see me like really buffering visually, that's why, because I was like weirdly spun out by that moon pendant in the top of the corner. Um, so I added that moon photo and the little I'm good charm, which I've used before, but I reprinted when I moved into my Vilafax because I wanted it again. I originally used that in my Hobonichi cousin on one of the pages. Um, it's a charm I found on Tumblr, just scrolling around and I didn't have a credit so I don't know where it comes from um but I do think it's very cute um and also a little copper foil dot again because I love them I talked about that extensively last week um I, as I said I do work out where to place the little moon charm and I think it's cool and then I add some of my own stickers as well the stickers that I sell in my shop um I almost said not sponsored, but if it's my own shop, I don't know if that counts. <laughs> but I like my stickers, so I use them a lot. I added a bunch of my own stickers after. Um, and then I do like a lot of writing. Um, and then uh, what else did I do? I add that ghost gloom card, <laughs> the sleepy gloom card, to the like left hand page. So it doesn't actually end up on the page I'm writing on, but on the next page. I think I'm going to move it in a second. Yeah. So I put it on that page instead. Um, and I just kind of like it being there next to the page where I'm talking about my doctor visit and my sleep stuff. Um, 
yeah, so that was the theming for the page. There you go. <laughs> um, I did ask this morning on YouTube if I could have some questions to answer. If you can hear me clicking on my laptop, sorry. Um, someone asked, I'm really loving following your Filofax journey and I was wondering how you plan on storing the inserts once you're done with them. Um, and I, I'm not sure. I'm not ready to let go of any of the pages yet, which is the nice thing about having bigger rings now, is I don't have to move pages as quickly as I thought I might. Um, I had originally been thinking that I would take out like a full month at a time, so that would be the daily and weekly pages and all the commonplace pages. So like every month I'd basically be starting like a new book um, and like blank from scratch. <laughs> um, however, when may turned into june i realized that i was not ready to let go of my commonplace pages so i didn't i kept everything in the book and i just put in new weekly pages um my plan first <laughs> was to group the pages up by month and then use like um a bulldog clip that's what we call them in the uk is that the universal name for them um i don't even know how to describe it you can google it <laughs> the clips i plan to use a clip to hold the pages together and I was going to print like an index, so I was just going to print a little A5 or A6 page with like the contents of the pack of papers. Um, and that way when I go back to reference information, I could find it really quickly. Especially if I knew kind of like roundabout when in the year I had written the pages, and I was going to do it like that and then keep those in a really nice box. Um, I couldn't find a box, <laughs> never mind a really nice box, I couldn't even find a normal box to keep them in. Um, obviously my pages are A5, so that's the size they need. the box needs to be, but I couldn't find anything that fit them properly. I was kind of looking around lots of different, like, normal shops here in the UK and I just couldn't find anything. And then I don't really want to order something fancy online because I want them to be affordable enough that I can buy as many as I need over the years. Um, <laughs> really thinking long term. But I just want something easy and reliable to store them in and the boxes that will match over time because I don't really want like 10 different boxes. <laughs> I just want like something consistent to store my work in. Um, so I couldn't find boxes and then I started thinking like maybe that's just going to be too much work. <laughs> so I kind of gave up on that and in the end I bought um, like a clear binder on Amazon. So like an A5 like folder, like a binder, like a school binder. Um, do you know where you see them a lot is when you get the K-pop journalers on Pinterest and Instagram and stuff and they use them, the clear binders. So I bought one that's A5 to check if it was going to be the right size um, and I paid like £5 for it, it was really cheap. Um, and I think I might use those, I feel like maybe they're going to be slightly reliable just because they're from Amazon, hopefully it won't be too bad. And I think for the time being I'll just store them in there until I can find like a different solution or something that I like more I guess. Um, so I just have one at the moment, one binder, and it's empty because I'm not ready to use it, but I have been thinking sort of actively about how I want to store my pages, like I'm troubleshooting it. If anyone has any really good ideas, or if you guys are storing your work in a way that you think sounds similar to me or that I would like, let me know because I'm really open to thoughts on that. Um, I think storing them in a box like a how would you call it, like an old file archive would be the most like satisfying thing. Maybe I could buy <laughs> like some filing drawers. Um, I say that like I have room to put drawers anywhere in my room, but it, I do want I want to store them kind of like that if that makes sense. Like I want it to be like more archival. But I guess if I have a number of binders over time, then it would be archival, and then also you can just put them on a bookshelf. So there is something to be said about that. Um, so the too long didn't read is that I'm not quite sure yet, but I think I'm going to keep them in a binder. So I'm just going to be switching them out as time goes on and storing them in a binder I guess. That's kind of what I've worked out. <laughs> um, and then someone else asked, uh, hang on, I'm reading. Okay, someone said, I wanted to ask you if you ever journal outside since your current setup is quite large. Um, if you ever read or reference things you've written earlier and how that works. Um, so they said, I've noticed that as I fill more notebooks and more notes on books and podcasts, recipes, creative writing tips, ETC, they get lost among personal journaling entries, to-do lists and doodles. I think I need to compartmentalise somehow. Um, so, okay, the first question. At the moment, I don't journal outside, I think. I don't know if that I've ever really done too much journaling outside. I think I do more note-taking outside, if anything, or like I used to. 
sometimes when I was out and I was tired and I would go and have a sit down, <laughs> which is like the story of my life, is just having a little sit down, um, I would make some notes maybe in my notebook, but now I don't tend to carry my file of facts around just because it is quite big and also I get worried about damaging the pages. Um, so no, not really, but that's not really a reflection on the file of facts, it's more that I don't think I'm ever really going out for long enough at the moment to want to be journaling outside. It's not like I have friends who I meet up and journal with because I know some people do that and I think that would be really cool. In that case, I would. <laughs> um, like if I was going somewhere specific, like to a library, I would bring it and maybe I would journal. But because when I leave the house, I'm normally just running errands and like buying groceries and that kind of thing, going to the post office, I don't bother. Um, at the end of the day, I always have <laughs> a very anxious little dog to come home to. So it's, I don't really go out and spend a lot of time just sort of hanging out and like sitting and drinking coffee for a long time. Um, I, I just, I just don't at the moment. Um, sometimes on a Wednesday when she's at daycare, I do and I go to the cinema or something. But again, I more go out to do something and then come back. I don't think I ever really go out with the intention to just be out and sit down. Um, if that makes sense. <laughs> I am like... I think I've said this before, but I think I do te like toe the edge of agoraphobia. I, I, the more time that passes, the harder I find it to leave the house. And when I'm out, I just feel very stressed. I don't particularly like being outside of the house for long periods of time, which is sad because I feel like it really rivals my like interest in learning stuff and exploring new places. <laughs> like I feel like they really like fight like against each other hard. Um, but I. I just journal at home, basically. I don't really go out much. Um, and then for referencing, what I do now is I recently bought some dividers from Color Cafe on Etsy. That's color with a K. So like K-O-L-O-U-R Cafe. Um, and I think it's in the UK, so there is a U in color. <laughs> um, and I used those to split up my sections. When I first started using my Filofax, all of the pages were mixed together. And I feel like I was not keeping as good an eye on where things were and it was getting confusing, like you mentioned. I did have a lot of like personal stuff mixed in with commonplace stuff and it was getting a bit baffling. Um, now what I'm trying to do is I have my weekly pages and then I have a divider and then I have my commonplace pages and I, I don't separate those from my journal pages or my personal pages, but I do try to group them together. So if I have <laughs> for example, if I have a number of pages on commonplacing, I'll keep those pages together. And then if I have a bunch of journal pages, I keep those together as well. Um, at, or at least if not that, I do try to keep them sort of in similar places to where they relate to. Like sometimes I'll do some medical research as commonplace pages and I'll keep those and then I'll have journal entries reflecting on that stuff and I'll keep them together. But because they're similar topics, I feel like it's easier to navigate. Um, so kind of like, as you said, I do try to compartmentalize them. Um, I do group them up by topic. And then I just try to keep like my book reviews are in a separate section, for example. So it's kind of it's just keeping things as separate as possible while still being related to each other. Um, but definitely work out your topics. I think that's the easiest way to organize things for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, it can get confusing because sometimes in my journal pages I talk about a bunch of stuff and then I'm like, okay, well, where does it go? In which case I normally just keep them together as journal pages. Like I have like a bunch of miscellaneous journal pages. Um, I am, as I'm working in my file of facts, I am trying to be more careful about where things go. So if I'm, because I do that thing where I fold my pages and glue them, if I have a page on the back that's still blank, but I've written like four pages of commonplace notes, I then will leave that back page blank so that there isn't like a random entry on it that can't be catalogued properly. I think what I'm gonna do is start printing some like bigger pictures and then just put them in the middle of the page to be like decorative um, because I am foreseeing that or like I have been starting to experience that as an issue. Um, but it's kind of fun <laughs> if you wanna look at it that way um, because I'm learning a lot using a file of facts, I think, and it's definitely going to be the easiest to archive and refer back to. Um, and especially if I'm like, because I feel like at the moment I'm troubleshooting things, it is really fun to think that like in a year's time, like things could be so easy to look back on and to find things again and to sort through and to organize. 
um, especially if I do keep pages separate so I don't put random journal entries on the back of articles. Um, if I make sure I don't do that, I think it's gonna be it's gonna be really fun and it'll be nice to have those bigger pictures too. I'll show you what I mean next week because I'm gonna put some together. Um, but yeah, I was actually thinking about making a more general how I'm using my file effects video, um, same as how I made how I use my Hobonichi cousin and my weeks and whatever. Um, I was thinking about making a big breakdown video because I think I feel ready. <laughs> so if you guys are interested in that, let me know. Um, I understand if you're not though, because all I talk about is my file effects now. Um, but if you want to see it, please tell me because I'd like to make that. <laughs> so um, I think that was the full question. They also asked if I had ever tried using disc bound notebooks. Um, and no, I haven't. I have looked at them and they seem really cool, but obviously because now I'm using Filofax, I'm just kind of like, well, I don't need to look at a disc pound right now. Um, I'm open to looking at it again in the future, but then it's like my goal, I think. <laughs> like, this is going to sound really like ironic, I guess, based on my channel history. But my goal is to find one system and stick to it. I don't actually want to keep moving. I just feel like I've been chasing that like perfect system in air quotes for so long that I keep changing books, but my goal is to stay put, <laughs> like I do just want like the system TM um, that I can continue forever and have boxes and boxes of papers for. So disc bound books are really cool though, I think they're really neat, but I do like the simplicity of Filofax, I guess. I like that I can hole punch anything um, and I'm not looking <laughs> at other options. So I do think disc bound is cool, but I'm also not really interested at the moment, I guess. So I haven't looked at it too much. The problem is that autistically speaking, if I look at things for too long, I do get more interested and then I can't stop thinking about them. That is how I ended up in Filofax. <laughs> so like, it's a good thing that I ended up in Filofax because I love it. But autistically speaking, I can't afford to just be like researching different notebooks because I'll get preoccupied and then we'll have trouble. So yeah, disc mount is cool, but I don't want it. <laughs> like the SpongeBob, I don't need it meme. Um, someone asked, I was wondering what kind of articles you usually keep in your commonplace books. I'm interested to know. Um, it depends. It's, it's just kind of stuff based around my interests. So at the moment, for example, I have some pages on commonplacing because I always think that's kind of fun. Um, I have some pages on the medical stuff that I've been researching for myself, um, based on where I'm probably going to get referred to soon. And then I have some pages on CDs because I love CDs at the moment. So I have an article on that and I have one on, <laughs> this one is groom, sorry. I have a really long article, it's like 20 pages, about the physical effects that trauma can have on a person. So about how having traumatic experiences as a child can make you a sick adult <laughs> um, for obvious reasons. I think that's interesting. Um, a lot of that article resonated with me, so I printed that whole thing out for reference, basically, while I'm undergoing all my weird stuff at the moment. Um, so that's the stuff I have in there right now. I also have some Joan Didion quotes, I think, um, from her article. Um, which article is it? It's the, the one about keeping a diary. Um, she did a little essay about that, and I have some of the quotes from that because I really like those those words. <laughs> Um, so it does just depend on my interest. Sometimes I collect a lot of like spooky notes. Um, other times I collect a lot of like Sherlock Holmes stuff. Other times maybe it's more to do with research for a project. I think there's going to be more of that soon because I'm working on my new project, the Everyday Gloom project, if you guys remember that from two weeks ago. Um, obviously I've been in the horrors a bit, so I've not really been updating as much or as working as much on illustration as I maybe would normally. Um, but I made the first page for that yesterday, finally, <laughs> and I have the cover worked out, so I'll put it on screen and you can see it for a second, um, because I think I'm happy with it, and once you've worked out the first couple of pages on the cover, I feel like it's so much easier to get started, <laughs> because you've established, like, the visual language, you kind of know what it's going to look like, visually speaking, <laughs> and then it's a lot easier to progress through the rest of the pages, because you just have to come up with the words and then the illustrations, and then, but if you know how it's all going to pull together, it's a lot easier. <laughs> Um, hopefully that makes sense. I just, for me, that feels like the hardest step is getting started and like establishing the appearance. And then once I've cracked that, I'm like, oh, okay, now it's just a matter of translating the information onto the page. <laughs> and that feels a bit easier to do. So I'm excited in case you couldn't tell. Um, so I might have more research-based pages soon, basically. 
um but there we go that's what's in my commonplace normally it's just very interest focused so you have to think about like what are your favorite topics to read about like do you like abandoned buildings you could have pages on that <laughs> um do you have a celebrity figure that you're really into you could have pages on that a music format a favorite band um an era in history a type of book you like to read you could just have commonplace pages about different styles of writing and reading um i don't know like it's it's so fun <laughs> um i think maybe you have to try not to overthink it because i think it's just so simple a pra as a practice um like whatever you're interacting with you can make pages about which is why so many of my pages i think are journal based at the moment um especially just while i'm trying to navigate some like health stuff and i have a lot on my mind it just helps me a lot to be able to get that stuff down on paper and to be able to do the medical research in my own time and to keep sleep notes as well like sleep tracking like to be able to keep all of that information together in one place it helps me to feel like a bit less lost in it all i think because it's a lot to deal with i guess um especially if you're going to the doctor and trying to advocate for yourself as someone who's been sick for quite a long time it's just like it's all a lot to try and to try and think about and to hold in your mind i guess and to process and stuff and to to live with every day so making notes about all those different aspects and being able to just keep them in one place tidy for reference not only does it help me feel like i'm prepared to deal with what's happening but it also helps me to get it off my mind a bit so it's not all just in there <laughs> um it's like if i could like if my, if my brain was full of bees <laughs> which is how it feels sometimes if i can take some of the bees out and put them in a box instead <laughs> then it makes it a bit easier i guess um at least there's less noise so i don't know that was a weird analogy but there you go um i'm not sure that 100 percent answered your question but those are the kinds of things in my commonplace um that is kind of how how i do it um and then someone asked what would you say is the most important highest priority part of your journaling system and I think I just answered that. Basically, it's just being able to to unload my brain. <laughs> um, so it is my commonplace pages and my journaling pages, I think, just to be able to keep all of that information. Um, and then my weekly pages too for my to-do list, I guess. But at the moment, because I'm doing less and I'm just trying to cope, <laughs> it's definitely my commonplace and my journal pages, just having the room to be able to keep that information all together um, and to be able to just put some stuff down on paper is... A very big help <laughs> to be honest so yep there we go okay i'm at 27 minutes the video is 30 minutes long so in this part of the video i am doing all the writing um it's maybe a good thing i answered some questions through that because it's really boring to just watch me write for a long time um i also kind of thought the lighting was a bit funny in this video but i wasn't sure if i was just really overthinking it because i'm so freaked out by the sun <laughs> um everything is looking a little alien to me recently because of the heat i'm feeling a bit like out of body to be honest with you um so hopefully hopefully the lighting is not actually that weird um i stuck all of the stickers in i was not paying attention um and i did in the end really like how it all pulled together like it's so scary to make these journal with me videos because i feel like it takes me so long to put pages together it takes me so so long to put pages together i never have a plan i just think like okay i want these two images and then i have to try and work out how to arrange them i never have like a plan in advance so sometimes trying to put them together while recording it and knowing i'm recording it is a bit tense <laughs> um i'm not quite sure how i want it to work out or like how i want it to look but I was really happy with how this one turned out in the end, especially because I do feel like it gave me like a little bit of stress um, at the beginning. I think I cut the shape out like three times around the pendant because I didn't like the edges. If you can hear Wednesday, I'm sorry, she's gotten up to be annoying. <laughs> I feel like she knows when I'm recording audio because she always just starts drinking water every single time. It's really annoying. Um, I feel like she knows and she hates what I do. <laughs> um, Okay, I think I'm basically done in the video. I think I, I'm finished. I don't know what I'm looking for. Oh, a paper clip. Yep. So I clipped the ghost, the sleepy ghost on the left-hand side of the page. And originally I was gonna put it on the same page, but I didn't really want to obscure the stuff that I've been working on. So I put it on the other side, which works because the other side of the page I think is an article. So that's what I was talking about where, yeah, it's a commonplace article. So I didn't want to put anything else on the back of that because then I can't catalog it later properly. Um, obviously if it's just a picture or a ghost I could just take it off or I could just it's not relevant so it doesn't matter 
it's just a picture so I don't need to worry too much um so that's the plan going forward I think is to try and really keep topics separate from the text um topics separate from the text you know what I mean <laughs> I'm trying to keep all my topics together um and not put random stuff on the back of other stuff because that's when it gets confusing I think especially timeline speaking like if I have a really hyper specific dated journal entry on the back of a commonplace article like that's really annoying for future me so I'm trying not to do that um which I think will work I think I think I can do it um these were some pages on commonplacing I put together a couple of days ago um, the images are Nick Cave from The Bad Seeds, his journals, and Courtney Loves, I think, her diary. Um, that's where the images are from. And the text is... I don't know where the text is from, I'll link it <laughs> in the description. Um, okay, all of that being said, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Sometimes when I answer questions, I feel like I'm not very present, like I, I can't remember what I said. <laughs> um, so I hope it was interesting, I hope it was helpful maybe. I don't know if maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but I hope you enjoyed this week's video. Um, thanks for enjoying this style because it's going to be a big help in the summer. Um, it's so hard to be in the attic right now, which is quite disappointing and quite difficult. Um, but we will persevere. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next week.